Hello, let's rock and roll. Let's start out standing today um, with some ankle rolls, so don't worry about how you're standing, just stand. Lift up one heel and just pivot on like all the knuckles of your toes and roll your ankle around. Uh, no, I'm not saying this because I'm wearing a donut on my shirt. Go the other way. <laughs> but like if you imagine your max range of motion of a circle was the donut, stay closer to the donut hole so that you are mobilizing small bones in your foot. Reverse again. But mobilizing small bones in your foot. Oh, but also engaging all the muscles around the ankle. Switch one more time to contain the size of the mo motion so you don't feel a sense of giving way at your ankle like you're going to roll it or sprain it. Switch to the other foot. It's lucky when I have a donut shirt on, eh? I really, really love the idea of this shirt because I love The Simpsons, but it was so tight at the collar. Let's go the other way. I also think I bought this for Cami because this is definitely too small for me, but um, anyway, I can't get it over my head, so I had to like cut a little, switch directions again. It's still not easy to get over my big old head, but I feel like if I cut any more, I'm going down into some weird, you know, I won't rip it right. It'll fray weird. I'll feel like I look like a college kid and not a grown up. Switch one more time. Sorry, I didn't have like enough queuing prepared, so I had to babble to you while we did these second sets. All right. Um, there, we're done with that. Let's warm up with a couple more standing exercises to just get your sense into your legs and feel rooted and grounded. I'm going to turn sideways to you, but we're going to start with a regular set of squats. Set your feet parallel about hip width apart. Try to organize your body so that most of your weight is over your heels and your hips, ribs, and head are stacked up in line with each other. As you start to go into your squat motion, I want the first couple to be a little exaggeratedly slow. Feel the weight in your heels, and as you lower yourself down, focus on your sit bones going back and down in space as your arms reach forward in the opposite direction. So that's one point of counterbalancing each other as we go through a squat and then lift back up. And just sense that while maintaining the weight over your heels as you go down and up, we're going to use those two points, the hips going back and the arms going forward, to keep the overall weight of your body balanced over your heels. And if you stay with that rhythm about that speed of motion, now stay with the feeling of your sit bones, but instead of focusing on your arms, keep them going, I want you to focus on your knees. Sense the back of your legs and feel your sit bones and like let's say your knee pits reaching away from each other as well. They're making a very gentle tractioning of your hamstring muscles that are about those two bony points coming further apart, again, to stay in that counterbalance over the heels. Two more times. And if you're staying connected with that, you're gonna have support for your knees, and so it's okay if they go over the toes. All right, I'm gonna face you. Now, sensing the side of your body a little, it will be very helpful to keep your weight over your heels still. Let's go into a side lunge and then a step back. When you're side lunging, hinge forward at your hips, and bring your legs together. I'm just keeping that simple because we're just warming up. Sense how you engage through the whole side of your body to stabilize you when you come up. Two more times. See, just like the donut, that was not on purpose. One more. And then back up. All right, move over if you need a little space. As I'm sending the weight to the other leg, that hip hinge is still important for me to keep my weight over the heel. You want to push down into the floor. Use that as your power. Opposite side of the body controls the stopping. Keep that back nice and long, head reaching away from the sit bones. More ways to tension. One more time. And then back up. So let's take it down to the floor. So you're kneeling on your hands and knees. Spread your fingertips nice and wide. And I want you to rotate your upper arms, angling them so your elbow pits point forward and your elbow points point backwards. Shift your weight forward and backwards just a little bit to sense where even weight over your arms and legs are. And then just slowly settle smaller and smaller into that. 
Let's isolate movement in your shoulder blades. We'll start to bring some attention to your upper body too. When you breathe in, draw your shoulder blades a little closer together to retract them. And at the same time, you're gonna feel your chest dipping a little to get out of the way. When you exhale, push down into your hands and spread your shoulder blades apart by letting your rib cage lift up into them. As you breathe in, draw the shoulder blades together and I want it little. So you feel the movement, but also stopping before they crash together. And then exhale, spread the blades apart, stopping before you want to round your spine like a cat stretch. Inhale on the way down. Feel those blades come together. Resist shrugging up to your ears. And when you push in a protraction, keep spiraling the arm like you first did in that start position. We'll do that two more times. Can you notice now when you protract again, if you do that spiral, you almost sense a lift in your palm, like we're creating that dome or the arch you want under your feet as well. One more time, drawing them together, spreading them apart. Okay, into a cat stretch from here. Take another breath in. Now when you exhale, start to flex the spine and we're gonna encourage further protraction than what we just practiced to let that mid back round in between the blades. Stay here, take a breath in. When you exhale, stick out your tailbone and start to flatten your back. Pull your sit bones away from your head. You're gonna go through neutral, lift your chest and chin and come into a gentle extension. Stay here, take a breath in. Exhale, tuck the tail under, draw the abs up as you're flexing your spine. You want your gaze to drop to look at your knees. Hold there, focus the inhale into the back of the body. Feel that nice expansion. Exhale, stick out your tailbone. Compress the abs so you've got support through the trunk. Lift your chest, lift your chin. One more time, breathe in. Exhale, tuck your tailbone under, start to round the spine. You want a contribution from the whole spine evenly, so head and tail keep drawing together right till the end of the motion. Stay there for your inhale. We're gonna push away from the floor more with your arms and legs. And now let's get long again. Exhale, start to stick out the tailbone. Send the movement like a wave up your body. Let your blades glide back and down to help you lift your chest and chin. And there we are in that extension. All right, back to a flat back. Now, just one more stability exercise while we're in this position. Let's do opposite arm and leg reaching out, our classic swim. But since we're focusing on, I decided today, this sense of tractioning underneath other stuff we're doing. So we always want some sense of traction, some sense of compression, figure out where we're mobilizing, where we're stabilizing. So when we do this reach, let's feel different accents in the limb and the trunk as we do this exercise. So on the first rep, if you slide your right leg back without your foot lifting off the mat and slide your left arm forward. So we're just gonna get to this point. And before we come off the ground, I want you to reach the toe and the finger away like you can't, like you're trying to reach for the end of the mat, you can't quite get, get there. That's where traction is, through the limb. Then when you're actually lifting the limb up, the compression is gonna be the abdominal wall, right? So you've got stability through the trunk, and then we wanna keep reaching out with the limbs so that we can use the muscles of the shoulder and the hip to lift up the leg. And the longer they are, the heavier they are, lower back down and bend back in. So if we want glute work, just in general, we want a straight leg when we activate our glute because that's heavier than a bent knee. Try a slow one on the other side. So just pose out your reach, reach a little further, feel traction. And can you make it be at the wrist and the elbow and the shoulder, at the knee, the ankle and the hip? And then exhale, compress your abs. So we've got a drawing into the center at the trunk and a reaching our traction through the limb. Lower back down. Can we go to full speed, but do that slide? So feel the glide out, the traction, lead into the lifting up. We're gonna tap down, slide back in. And again, exhale. So we've always got support in the center. Make you guys feel safe to reach out and pull back in. Right, so that's still the most important that we don't give way in the middle. That you're strong like a table, or strong like a bridge. And then back in. Exhale. And when we do that breath, we wanna activate the breathing muscles, right? We want our diaphragm to be able to pump. We want the pelvic floor, the deep layer of the abdominals. And then we have really small spinal muscles, deep, close to the vertebra. And they are stimulated as part of the system resisting rotating side to side. So this moves great. You got three more reps. Sorry, I'm making you do so many, but I want you to feel your way through this. Um, what was I saying? Oh yes, yes, <laughs> they get stimulated whenever we're resisting rotation. So this opposite arm and leg is great to highlight them here. And then back down. Okay, well, let's go down onto your back.
All right, undulating hip roll, please. Let me just fix my little hood here. Leave a little space in between your knees. Feet are about six to eight inches away from you and arms up by your side. I'm going to remove my arm for just the first rep so you can watch the flow of the movement. When you exhale, start a hip roll, rocking through imprint and peeling your spine off the mat, a vertebra at a time to a bridge. So now our traction is going out the front of the body. Then you're gonna stay toned through your back and come straight down by hinging at your hips. So we're gonna use the exhale to get that compressive breath as you start to roll off and then feel yourself gradually elongate as you arrive at the top. Knees are reaching away from the shoulders as you hinge back down. Exhale, curl the pelvis off, keeping the abs engaged, reach your knees away, drop those hips down. Two more in this direction, exhale to lift. Breathe into your back as you're lowering your hips, one more. Exhale, roll up, put a little weight into your big toes and lower down, let's reverse that. So now use your exhale to create tone connection in the trunk, lift your hips straight up to bridge, now inhaling into your back to open the back of your body as you roll down a vertebra at a time. Come back to neutral. Exhale, squeeze your glutes, give that pressure into your big toes and inhale, roll your way back down. Exhale as you lift, opening the front of the hip joint. Inhale to return. If you could sense that hamstring thing again, this time when you lift your hips, sit bones, towards your knees. So now the compression is in the hamstrings instead of the traction like before and roll back down. One more time, exhale up. Maybe it's hamstring day and not traction day. I don't know yet. And roll back down. All right, arms up to the ceiling, toe taps, rock into imprint when you exhale, lift up one leg and then the other. Just a set of three on each side, then we're going into some ab work. When you exhale, you're gonna lower one foot, tap your toes on the mat. Inhale, take your leg back up to tabletop. Exhale, so now we need a little more compressive force. We got that deep transverse abdominal, you feel through your breath, inhale up. But we also wanna focus on drawing the hip bones and the ribs closer together to maintain imprint. And so that compression has to fight the weight of the leg getting heavier as it falls down. Let's do one more to each side. Exhale, tap to the mat. Inhale up and exhale lower and then back up. Leave your legs for a sec, bring your arms down by your sides. We're gonna hold those legs in tabletop ab prep. On your exhale, nod your chin, curl your head and shoulders off the mat, hover your arms about shoulder height and inhale as you lower back down. And again, exhale, nod the chin, flex forward, gazing towards your thighs. Inhale, back down. We're gonna do that three more times. I want you to feel it through breath. As you exhale, elongate the back of the body. Use the breath to slide the ribs down, facilitating that flexion. Inhale, open, and exhale, curl. Inhale, down. We're going up, you're staying up. Exhale, you're doing a 50. Inhale for five bounces. Then exhale, reach out your legs. Bend them in, two, three, four, five, and out. I'm sorry, I gave you no warning. I just decided this. Inhale, two, three, four, five, and draw the navel in deeper. Inhale, two, three, four, five, and exhale out. Let's do one more. Two, three, four, five, and out. Two, three, four, five. Tuck your knees in. Drop your head back down. Leave your legs in the air, but you can bring them into your uh, chest a little bit just to get a little relief. Hands behind your head. Legs back to tabletop, activate the imprint, angle your elbows forward a little bit. I just decided now some obliques with chopping. First, no legs, then we add toe taps. Nod the chin, curl up your head and shoulders. All right, just the upper body to get a sense of this. So you're gonna rotate to the side, opposite arm goes across to chop, come back to center. Other side, that's all you need with your upper body. Let's add your legs right back in. So tap the opposite leg. You're gonna leave up the one you're turning towards. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then exhale, rotate. Whoops, what are we doing? <laughs> back to center, I forgot what exercise I just said, sorry. Back to the middle, exhale, rotate, tap down. And lift, exhale. Every time you twist, you're trying to increase your flexion. So make sure the upper body is following that chop You'll notice one of your shoulder blades comes all the way off the mat. One more to each side. Exhale, inhale center and twist and center. Lower back down, you can squeeze yourself. Yay. All right, flip over onto your stomach. Oh. 
let's start with your um, arms in a W position. I'm going to have you begin with a couple reps, just feeling out the extension of your upper back. Before you start, let's do some bony landmark anchoring again. You should be able to feel your pelvis, the two hip bones, if you rock side to side, and your pubic bone. I want you to push your pubic bone down just a tiny bit. Like this would be like doing an imprint, you know, just going in that direction if you were laying on your back. And then notice your ribs because you're smooshed. All of your ribs should be touching right now. We're going to stay tuned in to like the bottom one or two ribs. All right, so pubic bone anchor, low ribs anchor. When you inhale, you're going to reach the crown of your head away from your toes. So now we have a traction that you could feel head away from toes, or if you brought your attention to pubic bone, your head reaches away from your pubic bone and your head's reaching away from your ribs. You feel that full traction up the front. Now when you exhale, start to lift your gaze and we're gonna begin taking the upper body away from the mat. Keep pressing down into your forearms so you can open your chest wide and pull your blades back, activating that like V sensation. Stay here for an inhale, opening your chest a little bit more. When you exhale, you're gonna lower back down. And as you lower, you're gonna make traction. So the abs are compressing in the front to pull you down and the back of your body is getting longer as you release to the mat. So right when your head gets down, you almost should feel like you're being pulled by the scruff at the base of your skull. Inhale at the bottom. Exhale, start to lift again. So the neck muscles engage first, then we wanna to go to the upper back muscles, press away with your forearms, anchor that low rib or two. Hold here, breathe in. And then exhale, compress the front of your body, open the back of your body to lower back down. One more like that, breathe in at the bottom, fill up with that air. And then when you exhale, draw the abs away from the floor gently and start to lift up. That practice of pulling your abs in while you're lifting is good to get you out of the habit of using your low back to lift. Hold here to breathe in and then exhale as you return. Good. Okay. And I should say using your low back first. It's okay if your low back contributes a little bit, but this is definitely about getting all the upper back muscles to start contributing more. Okay, we're going to go from same lift is, becomes a new starting position. We're going to do hovers, alternating your arms between I, T, and Y. Follow my lead. All right, let's take an inhale breath to lift your head and chest up into extension. When you exhale, lower your upper body to a hover and straighten your arms by your hips. That's your eye position. When you inhale, you're gonna lift your upper body back up, catch yourself briefly on your forearms. Exhale, go back down to hover, reach your arms out to the side, that's your T. Inhale, back in. Try not to overshoot the lift. If anything, go like 80% of your most. Exhale, now go down to your Y, so that's our superhero flying. Inhale, elbows into your hips, lift your chest. Let's do them all again. Go back to the I. Exhale, arms in tight by your sides. Feel that nice little squeeze at the armpit. Inhale, lift back up. Exhale, open your arms out to the sides. Low T, hover. Inhale, lift back up. Exhale, down, reaching your arms overhead. Inhale, back up. One more to each position. Exhale to the I. Squeeze it in tight. Let's get nice and low. Inhale, let your gaze come off the end of the mat when you push up. Exhale, take it down to the T, reach wide. Inhale, press back up, blades back and down. Exhale, reach overhead to the Y. Inhale, back up. Well, that was plenty. I'll lower all the way back down. Sit back onto your heels. Let's go into that shell stretch. All right, why don't we um, just take a full breath in that shell. Ha ha. Then tuck an elbow in by your side. Reach your other arm across and go into your side bend. Then when you exhale, tuck that elbow in. Take a big inhale as you stretch across. Exhale into your hip. Inhale up and over. Exhale to your hip and inhale to reach. And then back and you can roll yourself up to sitting for a half roll back. Okay, knees are bent. You can go up on a riser if your hips are really uncomfortable in this position. Or you can also try sliding your legs out a little farther and just leaving your toes up and heels down. Still using your feet to create that sense of grounding. Two grounds, heels, and in my starting position, sit bones. They act like your feet to be the base of your posture. So let's get your head, ribs, and hips lined up. Arms reaching forward at chest height. 
And we begin this exercise already flexed. So on your next exhale, you're gonna round forward over your legs. Keep your arms level with the floor, but reach them forward more towards the wall. All right, here's your shape. Take another breath in. Try to sense the breath going into your back. We're gonna keep practicing that. When you exhale, compress your abs and roll back your hips, tucking your pubic bone up to help you rock that pelvis. Inhale, dive forward, stop on your back on your sit bones. Now, as you roll back muscularly, we want compression from your abs, relax in the top of the shoulders, and then keep that shape as you dive forward by expanding the back with your breath. Exhale, roll back. We also want to feel some tucking from the glutes so the front of the hips can get longer. Inhale, dive forward. And there's a sensation like working in relationship with each other. You might want to tune into my glutes squeeze to try to get shorter. I make that happen so that I can allow the hip flexors to work as they get longer. Dive forward just one more time like that. Roll back on your exhale and then curl forward. Okay, sit up tall again. Let your arms just take a quick break. So focusing on that lower half of this movement is really important so you know this is a muscle most of us need to release anyway. And this is where we all want to get stronger. Now, when we start to rotate the upper body, the swing of the arms pulls away from the practice of this and the tension you're making. Double down on those efforts. Let the twist come from here. All right, so we start at vertical for this one. On your exhale, begin to roll back your pelvis again. So you're pulling yourself off your sit bones. And now with your upper body, you're just going to reach one arm back following that rotation with your gaze. As you inhale, we're going to turn forward, sit up tall on those sit bones. Exhale, roll back, rotate, look back at your hands. Inhale, back up. I always love this exercise because you're making a smiley face to each side. And, roll. and then when I realize that I can't not be smiling, <laughs> and then back up. It's like a little facelift. Cheeky's real high. Exhale. Inhale up. Try to stay even as you roll back at the pelvis. So feel it from your pubic bone. If I tuck up there, that's why I always cue that. You know where your center line is. Three more times. Roll back. Chest nice and wide. Shoulders heavy. Inhale up. Exhale. Roll back. And lift. Last one. Roll it down. And then back up. All right. I'm going to take you up. We're going to do a challenging stability exercise next. Uh, Sidekicks. <clears throat> Since it's challenging, I'm going to give you a little mini exercise before the big one. You're going to go from a tall kneeling position, almost like you're going to cartwheel. I want you to bring one hand down to the mat. Keep it even with the knee you're going to balance on. And of course, spread your fingertips apart. Try to do that even weight distribution like you did in quadruped. So just to feel your way through this, to make sure you've got good leverage. Oh, one more thing. Sorry. Turn your leg a little bit. So you can see my foot. That angle will also give you stability. Okay. Uh, we're going to do tiny just leg circles just so you can feel holding that leg in the air. Now, the hand you are not using is either here or here if you prefer. Okay. So up to hip height. Traction. <laughs> Abs are going to pull this way. Draw your hips towards your ribs. Leg is reaching out like your toes are trying to touch the wall. Five small circles. This could be the donut, not the donut hole. Three. You know I had to bring that up one more time. Four. Five. Reverse it for five. And four. Three. Two. One. Tap it down for a sec. All right. Kicking forward and backwards can be much tougher to stabilize on this plane. Be careful. Leg back up to hip height. As you breathe in, flex your foot, swing it forward, and just give it a little pulse, pulse. Exhale, point your toes, kick it back. And again, inhale, reaching one, two. Exhale, sweep back the leg four more times. Inhale, inhale. Exhale back. Push out through the heel. Open the front of the hip. When you kick forward, sit bone back. That's where your traction is. And reach. Last one. Try to keep that height. This builds endurance here. And back. Also on the side you're balancing on. Like hopefully you felt that from that sustained contraction. All right. Let's do it again. So just fuss around a little bit. Find your happy place. Okay. Leg is in line with you, hands there or there, and then don't forget to turn that leg. 
<laughs> lift your top leg to hip height. Okay, little circles. We're going around for five, four, three, two. Now reverse it so like it's coming out of the joint. Spiral. Make that leg longer. Sorry to say something gross. I didn't mean that to be gross. One more time. I meant traction, not ripped off. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Six times. Kicking forward and backwards. Press away from the floor with the arm and the leg. Traction that leg reaching to the wall. Keep it parallel. Inhale for two pulses. Point your toes. Kick back. Right into that sit bone thing. It goes back, back, sweep. Inhale, reach, reach, pull those abs in and up. Inhale, inhale. When you pull your abs and push away from the floor. Two more times. Kick, kick, sweep back the leg. Last time reaching one, two, and back. All right, come on back down. Come into tall kneel again. And just take your arms up to the side, a little bit forward of your body. And just get a little wrist rolly, wrist rolly. Bring it in front of you, wrist rolly, wrist rolly. Turn your palms over, one more set, wrist rolly, wrist rolly. Okay, we're gonna do swimming from a kneeling position. Your challenge will be not to rotate here. So once again, we can even tie all the way down to those deep paraspinal muscles and bigger picture stabilizing your hips, with your glutes, challenging your lats. Arms up to the ceiling, so we've got that W arm position again. Let's take a prep breath to feel the parts. So as you breathe in, imagine getting taller. So I'm just reaching up for that real high, that's my traction. But then when you exhale, without losing that energy up with your fingers, let your ribs slide down, let your armpits slide down, and feel that force of your breath. Let's do that one more time. Breathe in. Shrug up, get big, 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 big. Exhale, keep those arms energized and just glide down the rib cage. Settle down the ball into the socket. Now, alternating little pulses. You're gonna inhale for five, four, three, two, one, and exhale, two, three, four, five. Now, I want you to keep those arms energized. I'm not gonna practice what I preach. <laughs> Sorry, snapping totally ruins the tension in my arms. Two, three, four, five. Now hug those ribs together. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Resist rotating the ribs. Last 10. And five, four, three, two, one. Ah, oh, circle those arms down. Mic going off. Did not give that the energy I wanted it to have at all. All right, going down on your wrists one more time, but from sitting. Hands are on the mat, either fingertips pointing forward or turned out to the sides. We're gonna hip roll into a bridge. Hip roll into a bridge supported on your arms. There's more words I should have said. Still with some space between your legs. Okay, same energy as when you're laying on your back though. As you exhale, compress your abs, start to rock your pelvis and we're gonna engage glutes and hamstrings as you're pushing your knees forward over your feet and lifting your hips about as high as your knees. Then you're gonna roll back down again through the ribs, low back and hips, and let your butt hang. So we try to articulate very close to neutral there. On your exhale, roll your hips up, press those knees forward, keep your gaze forward so you're looking at the wall, and then roll back down again, unravel, let the weight land, just to get it off your arms in between reps. Roll up. And then roll back down again. Let's just do that one more time. Curl up on your exhale, and then inhale to roll back down. How about a set of tricep presses? You can stay hip down, and then you're gonna go back and up like that. One option, try that, see if you like it. Or half a bridge. So I'm gonna roll up one more time all the way if I'm doing that style, so you can feel how high you would go to determine what halfway down is. And then I want you to bend your elbows going till the butt taps the ground and then back up. And just barely tapping. I mean, I don't care if your whole butt gets down, that's not even the problem. I want you to go slow to sense what I mean by barely. It's like the deceleration, nope, to feel your pants touch the ground. And then, oh, just kidding, change your mind. That's where the good muscle work is. Right there, and then power to go up. 
because the ground is freezing cold and ice. Ooh, I want to get off of it. Two more times. Keep lifting up out of those shoulders and roll yourself back down. All right, legs out straight. Leave a little space in between your feet. Your legs can be fully straightened or slightly bent at the knees, whichever lets you achieve a starting position on your sit bones. Spine stretch forward, take a breath in to prepare. When you exhale, drop your chin and curl forward, flexing over your legs. Stay at the bottom, take an inhale breath into your back. When you exhale, you're gonna roll up one bone at a time and find that vertical position again, head over your shoulders. Inhale, hands come around behind you, do a spider finger touch. Exhale, lift your chest and chin and really open those collarbones and retract your blades. Inhale, come back to neutral, put your hands on your legs. Take an exhale, nod your chin, curl forward, round over your knees, scoop those abs in. Breathe in at the bottom, let tension out of your upper body. Exhale, roll up, and I want you to float. Imagine the space you're putting between each vertebra as you lift them up. Take an inhale, hands around to the back, touch the floor, Exhale, lift your heart, get those abs to support that extension. Inhale, come back to neutral hands on your legs. Exhale, drop your chin, curl forward, round over your knees. Hold there, take your breath in. And then exhale, roll back up, open the chest. Inhale, hands to the back, shoulders back, lift your gaze. And then come back to a neutral spine. Ba-ba-ba-ba. Bye-bye. Have a great week. I will see you later.